Before this video begins, I just want to put it out there that no, I am not doing this for clicks. I literally could care less about the number of people watching this video. So no, this is not just pure clickbait to get more people to fight in the comment section. It's all really just speculation. Take a look at this tweet from the Cam and Strick podcast where we have NHL insider Andy Strickland making a bold statement on the Toronto Maple Leaf superstar Austin Matthews. The topic was brought up where Andy Strickland mentioned if anyone has heard about how Austin Matthews will be traded this summer. There wasn't even some sort of contemplation where he was like, has anyone heard that Austin Matthews may get traded this summer or could get traded this summer? He said it with a 100% guarantee that he will be traded this summer. Strickland follows up with a question saying, quote unquote, you're going to lose him for nothing? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a really bold statement to make, especially when you consider what Austin means to the Toronto Maple Leafs and, of course, the city of Toronto in general. I mean, he's a literal icon there. He's been a huge part of Toronto's turnaround from the bottom of the standings to the top of the league. And so when an insider is saying that they're going to trade him this offseason, it sounds a bit frightening, does it not? Strickland later argued that Matthews will sign somewhere else other than Toronto next year as he only has one year left on his contract at the end of the season. This obviously angers Leafs fans and honestly me too because we're just tired of hearing these stupid narratives that oh Matthews is fed up with Toronto and oh he wants to go win a ring somewhere else and you know oh he wants to go back to Cali or Arizona to stay close to his family but Strickland who has nothing to do with the Leafs he works with the Blues he really thinks that Austin Matthews is gone after this season unless the Leafs go all the way and win the Stanley Cup which as of right now is not very likely because they haven't even been able to win a round yet. But considering how Matthews has a no movement clause that starts on July 1st this year, and you know that's the day when Toronto can start negotiating his contract, it creates a dynamic between the player and a team that can be described as nothing but risky and super interesting. There will be Maple Leafs fans and media coverage who will argue that Andy Strickland is just off his rocker, which he is in a way, but he does make a very valid point that Matthews being arguably a top 5 player in the NHL right now and a pending UFA will give him more leverage in his decision to sign wherever he wants. He can also shoot down any potential trades he chooses come July 1st, so the man has got some say in what he wants. Put it this way, that Matthews is wrapping up the last year of his $11.64 million AAV contract, and the Leafs will either need to show progress come the playoffs, which isn't necessarily a guarantee, or they will need to get Matthews such a raise in his salary to a point where his contract can be burdensome. So in the end, it's really just a lose-lose situation for them, but it could be worth the price if Matthews stays. But if the Leafs fail to show any progress, there is thought that Matthews may not be in a blue and white uniform in 2024. I mean, there's the money, there's the success, there are so many ramifications to the situation that the Leafs will need to see prior experiences and examples to potentially give them a solution. Take fellow American Matthew Kachuk, for example. He was drafted by the Calgary Flames in 2016, which was the same draft as Austin Matthews. But as time went on, the Flames kind of figured that this guy is not going to be sticking around for much longer, so they pretty much shipped him off in that historical blockbuster trade to Florida. Kachuk was on his way to become a UFA last summer after his career year, but Calgary made sure they could first maximize what they could get for him by trading him away for Huberdeau, Uyghur, a first, and a prospect, which was a very smart move. Similarly, the Leafs have to keep this option for Matthews because there's just this thing where American players don't like to play in Canada. We saw the same thing with Johnny Gaudreau, who chose to sign with a worse team in America than stick with the Flames who were giving him a raise. Going back to Kachuk, he was offered the captaincy and a raise that would have given them over $11 million, and he declined that offer too, so Matthews could be next. Strickland argues that anything short of the Leafs winning the Cup this year will probably result in Toronto trading him before the start of free agency next year. He says that Toronto can't just lose him for nothing, and ideally, he's right. If their last resort was trading Matthews versus letting him walk, I think any GM would say trade him but the Leafs might not want to give Matthews the power to steer the ship in whichever direction he sees fit. So that leaves the question, okay, if Matthews really does leave, what team or what type of team should step up and acquire him? If you go to the tweet that was sent by Andy Strickland, I'll put the link in the description below, he asks his listeners and the comment section on the teams they think would go ahead and trade for Austin Matthews, and a lot of these responses were pretty much just the user's favorite teams. As amazing of an option it would be to add a player like Matthews to your favorite team, there are certain things that wouldn't necessarily make it a slam dunk for the other 31 NHL clubs. First of all, let's just get over it. When 2024 rolls around, Austin Matthews will become the highest paid player in the NHL. This guy has honestly proved himself worthy to get this recognition for the past few years, and he honestly deserves it. I mean, the timing of this contract is one thing, but the numbers he's putting up, the name he's created for himself in the league is just amazing. But as previously implied, not every team can afford a contract near 13 to 14 million dollars a year, even if we consider the rumor salary cap inflation. For most teams in playoff contention like the Canes, the Bruins, the Knights, the Rangers, the Bolts, he's just financially not in their reach, put it that way. Second of all, salary issues are one thing, but do you really think Toronto is just going to give up their most skilled player of all time for absolutely nothing? 
there will be at least two to three first round picks required for this guy, or as Strickland says jokingly, 20 first round picks. And yeah, that's a hyperbole, but there will certainly be multiple first round picks, their top prospects, and possibly one or two guys who can maybe make the top nine players on the team and are guys that can help the Leafs as they would just not really want to rebuild. Part of the reason why the summer is the best time to make this move is because, well, the Leafs can maximize their return with a lot of bidders. That's a lot to consider, but the reality is that nobody really knows what Matthews is thinking. The front office doesn't have an idea of what his intentions are, forget about the media. He has said in the past that he loves the city and people of Toronto, as he's made great friendships even outside of hockey if you consider his bromance with Justin Bieber. But the unfortunate truth is that a hockey player's priorities have changed. If the Leafs manage to best the Canes, the Rangers, and somehow the Bruins, the top dogs of the East, then there's no doubt that Matthews is staying. But given what the reality is of Toronto's notorious problem and the teams in that loaded Eastern Conference, winning a round is one thing, but to win two, three rounds is crazy. If they get bounced in the first or second round, so be it. Matthews is a ghost, all right? It would be easier to catch Bigfoot than it would be to find Austin Matthews. But if they manage to, you know, make the Eastern Conference final or somehow the Stanley Cup final, then that could change Austin Matthews' mind. But the real question isn't if Matthews would leave the Leafs. The real question is would management risk so much to keep him, or what are they willing to risk if he doesn't commit to staying in Toronto? Dubis should be fired on the spot if he lets Matthews go scot-free without any sort of mega return. This isn't a guy like Freddie Anderson or Zach Hyman where they can just let him go wherever without anything in return, and it's kind of funny how I use those two as examples because both of them are doing great, but Matthews isn't like those guys. He's a guy that would get Toronto a return package bigger than any other player could possibly give in the last 20 years, maybe except for current Connor McDavid or Prime Ovechkin and Crosby, but still, he would be up there, all right? There's no doubt about that. For now, the Leafs should not worry about Matthews. They should stay focused on winning a round, possibly winning more than just a round if they can. But as soon as the offseason hits and July comes around, regardless of how far they win the playoffs, they gotta shift gears to Matthews committing to the franchise for the big package. Anything less than that means exploring the options for the organization, and that should certainly open up a lot of speculation and the potential window for a Matthews trade. Look, in all fairness, Andy Strickland could have been exaggerating this whole time, and that would really just make this entire video useless, but his point doesn't go without merit. I mean, the Leafs need a serious commitment from Matthews, and if they aren't able to convince him to stay, they should then focus on trading him to a team that can give him the best return possible. So let me know in the comments what you guys would think about Matthews potentially leaving Toronto. Does he leave? Does he stay? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you guys for tuning in and have a wonderful day.